Hello and welcome to Jay's Studio. Um, this will be the last, not the last video, but the last uh, the last calibration video in the series that we're doing on calibrating your ER20 printer. Um, this, uh, as we have the entire uh, series, we're, we're following the Teaching Tech 3D printer calibration. Uh, link is in the comments below to get to this particular page. And as we've done from the beginning, we're basically following the steps across the, uh, across the green banner on these pages. Uh, from left to right and uh, in, in working on calibrating our printer. Uh, the idea being that uh, uh, we're trying to head off problems in the future uh, by going ahead and solving things uh, with prevention uh, and squaring away the way the printer works, uh, both within its firmware and the EEPROM, as well as slicer settings to uh, hopefully set everybody up for success when using the ER20. Um, this is our, this is the last uh, step that I'm going to do, and it's called linear advance uh, tuning. Uh, and uh, linear advance tuning, what is it? Uh, it is a pressure regulation of the extruder to the hot end. It's actually a way of more elegantly uh, managing the pressure on the filament, such as to eliminate things like bulges on your outside surfaces, to make corners be more clean, uh, especially like those 90 degree corners, the, that, that like small bulge that's on most of your prints at 90 degree corners, this is supposed to help mitigate that. Um, and it's, it's just an elegant way or more elegant way of managing the pressure of the filament going into your hot end. Um, there are some requirements for linear advance. Uh, one, and, and the ER20 meets them all. A lot of your printers, if you've got multiple printers, probably don't. Uh, one is the new 2209 uh, stepper drivers. Uh, that they are compatible with Linear Advance, 32-bit uh, mainboard. Both of these things the ER20 has, right? Uh, so that uh, this is available to you. If you have 2208 drivers in another printer, uh, you have to enable UART mode, UART mode, um, and disable legacy mode and do some things like that. Uh, we're not getting into that in this video. Uh, we're just dealing with uh, the ER20, which has this stuff already on board. Uh, the Marlin firmware um, already allows for K-Advance, the released firmware already allows for K-Advance to be dialed in right on your LCD, or as we've been doing uh, within Pronterface, um, we can give it, the, we can load things into the EEPROM uh, when we get it done. Uh, so that's that's what Linear Advance is for, and um, this actually is going to take us to a an external site. Uh, there is no G-code generator on this page in Teaching Tech, unlike most of the other pages. Uh, he actually gives you a link on the site right here that if when you, when you click on it, will take you to Marlin's own Linear Advanced Calibration Pattern Generator. Um, and this is, uh, Linear Advanced is also called K-Factor, because uh, K stands for pressure, right? Um, and this is uh, a way of generating a G-code for you to print. Uh, and I'll show you the, the result of my second print on this uh, here in just a second. So... Here are the, when you get, get to this page, you're gonna enter in a few things. It's not difficult. I'll talk through them pretty quickly right now. Um, and you can always just go back in the video if I get going too fast and, and catch, catch up as you generate your own. Um, you can give it a name. You can give your filament a name. I should mention at this point that K factor is uh, one, of the, one of the variables in K factor is the type of filament you have. So to correctly dial in your K factor, uh, you will probably have to do this every filament change. So take that into account if you decide to use linear advance. Advance. Okay. Filament diameter we know is 175. Nozzle diameter is 0.4. Nozzle temperature. Uh, remember we dialed in in our um, in our calibration print we dialed in 215 as our our optimum temperature for this particular matte blue PLA uh, filament. Uh, bed temperature, I want 65 at this one. I mean, usually I have a 60, a bed temperature of 60C, but uh, 65, considering this is only a single layer print of just a few lines, I want to make sure I give everything a chance to adhere as well as possible. Uh, the retraction distance, remember we dialed in a retraction distance of 4 millimeters, and the layer height's 0.2. That's it for the first section. We continue going down the sec going down to the print bed. We dial in 250 by 220, and we're good to go. That's the ER20's uh, X and Y axes. Uh, for the print bed. Um, then we're going to look at speed. Um, there's going to be a slow printing speed and a fast printing speed. The default is 20 and 70. You can leave it there. What you want is a big difference. Um, and so uh, that's probably good to just leave as default. Movement speed that's showing is 120. You can leave that as default. Um, I, I actually suggest that you go down to like 100 because this is such a fast print and it's moving between the elements really quickly. Slowing that down a bit is not a bad idea. 
For track speed, uh, remember we dialed that in as 45. So for both retract and under track speed, we'll put 45 for the millimeters per second. And acceleration, remember we dialed in 1100. Uh, you can put a different number in there if you want to. The default is 500. 1100 is what we dialed in as the ideal acceleration for the ER20. All these jerk settings, just leave them alone. It's going to say minus one in there. That just means it's going to go with the firmware uh, default. Remember, we dialed in our junction deviation at 0 0.05, and that's already set. So we're just going to leave that at default. We're going to go down to the pattern. The pattern is this going to be this like uh, grid, square grid, and I'll show it to you here in just a second. Um, you're going to you know leave it leave default. It says LIN advanced version. It is 1.5 for our version of Marlin. The pattern type. You should probably just leave it at standard unless you want it to look strange on your or look different on your print bed. Um, I, you know, I, I did two prints and this is like this. This is what we're actually generating as the calibration piece for K advance. And that's the, your starting value and your ending value and the stepping. What this is putting in there is like, hey, I want you to test between this starting and this ending value at these particular or at this particular interval. And I wound up doing two of these prints. My first one I did, like right here, I did 0.2 as a starting value, and an ending value was 0.5, um, and my k-factor stepping uh, could be 0 0.025. Uh, it needs to be an equal divisor. It won't let you go forward from this point if that, that uh, k-factor stepping isn't an equal divisor between those two values, the starting and ending value. After that, everything should be pretty much left to default, um, and then you go down to advanced, Advanced says what's your nozzle to line rate. Again, you really shouldn't have to mess with advanced unless you really want to, um, if you know something. I do know that I want my extrusion multiplier to be a little bit higher, because remember, we as we've gone through these, this series, I've decided that it just very slightly under extrudes. So I'm going to put 1.15 as my extrusion multiplier just to make sure I've got plenty of filament flow during this particular print. Um, other than that, I am not going to prime. And the other thing that I uncheck is to prime the nozzle. Why? Because I'm going to copy my own G code that we've been working on uh, uh, throughout these, uh, uh, my starting G code that I've used on all the teaching tech uh, uh, G codes that we've generated for the calibration. I'm just going to copy that in here too. So what this is going to do when you get done, you can just go generate G code and over to your right over here, you've got your G code, uh, which can then be downloaded as a file and printed. The only thing I do here is I actually go to the beginning of the print here uh, where it starts with uh, when it gets to G28 home, the home all axes, and I will actually um, uh, insert the start G code that, uh, that, we, that I've used in all my other prints just to make sure that it's printing that, that, uh, that prime line, etc. like I like it, uh, and make sure everything's ready to go on the print. Once you're done, um, then down at the bottom, let me get down to the bottom here. Uh, all you have to do is hit download as file. It will download the file, and then you throw it on your SD card and you print. Very easy to do. Um, actually talking through it took longer than it actually takes to do it. <laughs> um, and this print is super fast, so you'll want to just sit at your printer and watch it happen. What do you get as a result? Um, what you'll get is a, a grid. Now, this is off my printer bread. It's way easier to read off your printer bread, which may mean that you need to wait until it completely cools down and pull it off. Because my, you know, the ER20's glass printer bread has all these little dots and dashes and, and stuff, and you're going to have a hard time interpreting your lines of your print uh, when they're actually, unless you've got like a really bright colored filament that contrasts, you're going to have a hard time seeing the print. So I, pull, I waited and then pulled it off. And this is the second one that I did. Uh, which had a little bit of a different range. Um, and what you're looking for, I'm going to get really as close as I can here. Um, obviously, pulling it off caused a few of the lines to like bend, so don't worry about the bends here. But you'll see that down towards the bottom of this, the lines weren't even completed. Uh, what the pattern does is it actually has like a... It'll, it'll print these brackets on the side. There's actually a couple lines around it that prints as well. But right here, you know, as it starts to go left to right on these lines, it'll do slow, fast slow, slow, fast, slow to complete it. And you're looking for what happens between the transitions between those slow and fast places. Um, and uh, and you're seeing how well the printer is actually printing too, right? You notice down at the bottom, most of these lines aren't even complete. And we don't start to see nice complete lines until we get up to the fifth line from the top up here, which by the way, was straight on the print bread. It, it, it looks 
it looks twisted here, but it was not that case, or it was not that on the print bed. So I'm basically looking at these top five lines to see what might be the best print line. And you can see like at the beginning, uh, from the slow to the fast transition, uh, there is a, there's a bit of a change of diameter to the line. Um, and then you can see over at the end that there's a bulge that comes out a bit as it moves from fast down to slow. Um, and what you're looking for is like the, the, the most straight uh, or less, you know, like are the most like consistent line across. And for me, what I'm seeing is this third from the top is really close, right? I mean, there, there's, there's, uh, there's a little bit less, like especially at the start, it seems to be pretty, uh, pretty consistent. It seems to have a real, relatively nice thickness across. And then on the right-hand side, and this is what the reason why I wanted to come to the third one down, it actually has a smaller bulge than the two above it uh, when it transitions back to the slow printing. That line for me, um, at this print, the top was a 0.48. Um, then it was a 0.4, um, uh, yeah, 0 0.48, 0 0.43, and then this one was a, like a 3.8. So I went in between the two lines and decided to, to, to kind of land on, an, on a round number of 0.4 as my K advance for now, all right? And that I can enter in two different places. Uh, if my K advance is 0.4, uh, one of the most easiest, or one of, if you don't want to use a terminal program, you can, excuse me for the uh, bouncing around. If you don't want to use a terminal program, all you got to do is come down into here, go into configuration, go into advanced settings, go all the way down to filament, and then go to advanced K, um, hit that, and then I will dial in 0.4. Remember that whenever you do something here what you that you're you're wanting to keep you're going to have to go into the configuration menu and then come down here to store settings and that just stored things in the EEPROM. The other way to do this is of course to use Pronterface. Come back here. I've got Pronterface open and already connected. Uh, everything looks good over on that point. And what I'm going to do to, to enable this in Pronterface is first list my, all my parameters, M503, like we've done numerous times. And down at the bottom, um, doo -doo -doo, let me find my M900 here. There we go. There's an M900 line right at the bottom. And it'll say echo linear advance, and then it'll say echo M900, and it's showing a K value of 0 0.40, which is what we want. I mean, if we wanted to turn it off, I could do M900, K0. And now when I did M503, my M900 is showing no K advance, K0.00. Turn it back on again, M900, K0.4, right? M503, and it's showing M900K, uh, the K value being 0 0.40. If I want to store it over here on Pronterface, I have to type in M500. It'll say sending M500, and we'll get settings a setting stored, uh, a prompt over on our LCD saying that it's set up. That's how you do linear advance. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, just a couple last parting thoughts uh, before we finish this series is that one, now that you know, again, it's almost a never-ending cycle. Now that we have, uh, now that we have tuned our linear advance, the correct thing to do is now go back to retraction tuning again. Um, and with linear advance enabled, uh, run retraction tuning. Uh, another set of retraction to probably two of them prints, where basically I will take the 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 retraction distance and kind of start where we are now, which is four, and actually move down. Because with linear advance enabled, we should be able to get good results on retraction with less retraction once linear advance is done. Um, then once we would, uh, once we develop a good linear advance, I'm sorry, a good retraction setting based on this linear advance, it would then uh, 
be, probably behoove me to just one more time go back to linear advance and run another one of these pattern generators just to make sure that we've got things at a good pressure and retraction set of settings for success. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, that will complete our calibration of the ER20, um, but it's not the last video in the segment. I will post one more video in which I will do a couple of prints, some real world prints, uh, with this matte blue PLA, and I could talk about the ER20 holistically, uh, both recommendation wise as well as the matte blue PLA from Airy One, and it'll be kind of a, a wrap up video with comments about the printer, uh, printer itself uh, now that it's calibrated. Thanks for joining me for the series, and look forward to uh, hopefully evaluating another printer in the near future.